Hey everyone, we are live. We are talking about the hormone fix. This is book club. I'm Dr. Anna Kabeca, known as the girlfriend doctor. And if you have my book, The Hormone Fix, you know exactly who I am because I tell my story in depth in The Hormone Fix. And so celebrating the fact that it is in paperback and um, continues to be a bestseller in menopause and um, has been a USA Today bestseller and is just um, uh, my magnus opus, to be honest. Well, we went through the intro and the foreword in last week's call, and today we're going through chapters one and two of The Hormone Fix. And this is where you have to have your pen and paper ready. Hopefully you guys have, you're on my email list, you got the handout, and you've downloaded the handout that came to you via email. Let me pull up a copy on my desktop real quick too. So I have it as well. You have the book club notes and a book club journal. And let's see here. All right. So you can download that. The first thing is, um, you know, in, in the, the, sorry, in the questions, in the questions, the first one we talked about, um, just what, what's your goal when picking up the hormone fix? What is your goal? What's your goal to, to get or gain from this? Let me, I'm going to, I'm on Facebook live also. So I want to share this. Cindy said she didn't get an email, just email team at drannacabeca.com. So team at D-R-A-N-N-A-C-A-B-E-C-A.com. Um, prior, you can get a copy of the book anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Books and Nobles, where, everywhere. Crystal said, how cool, Crystal, I love you. We are doing book club here, The Hormone Fix, and um, I'm going to talk about what, here we go, book notes for chapters one and three. So we have these um, notes and want to talk about in page 13 and 14 of the hormone fix, I go through what are um, the symptoms associated with each of the hormones predominantly. I mean, it gives you a good idea. Symptoms of excess estrogen, symptoms of low estrogen, symptoms of uh, too much or too little progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA. So for your homework, I want you guys to circle which symptoms, if you haven't already, I mean, use this book as a workbook. So circle which symptoms sound like you that you're struggling with. And we can see which ones are, um, in which area you may have more issues than another specifically. So it's kind of interesting to see when your symptoms relate to a hormone and how that looks. So that's on page 13 and 14. And the second question in our journal or book club notes is what are the hormone neurotransmitter connections and for which one of you is most significant? So I talk about that here and we'll go into it. And then I also talk about the three magic hormones. So the three magic hormones. And then in chapter two about the questions, you've got questionnaires in chapter two. So the questionnaires are our hormone symptom questionnaire and also how it relates to the hormones, medical symptom toxicity questionnaire, the EVE questionnaire, and the positivity self-assessment questionnaire. So um, I will be saving this on social media so you guys can come back and, and review, watch this later if you haven't taken your notes, but I want you to ask your question. There's also the daily tracker and we'll get to that. And lab test. And I always talk about the four key lab tests that I want you to know about yourself. So back here. All right. So the four key lab tests. So, so when we think about symptoms of excess estrogen or low estrogen, low estrogen is associated with mental fogginess, forgetfulness, depression, anxiety, moodiness, hot flashes, night sweats, fatigue, decreased libido, dry eyes, dry skin, dry vagina, loss of skin radiance, um, lagging breast tissue, pain during intercourse, weight gain, back and joint pain, heart palpitations, headache, and GI discomfort and poor sleep quality. Um, and then, so that's 
some of the symptoms associated with low estrogen. So you guys, if you have the book, page 13 and 14. And low progesterone, um, infertility, irregular menstrual cycle, breast tenderness, depression, anxiety and fatigue, poor concentration, memory loss, fibrocystic breasts, PMS mood swings, PCOS, headaches, fibroids, water retention, bloating, weight gain, breast and uterine cancer, cold body temperature, menstrual flow changes. Those are all associated with um, low progesterone. Hair loss would be in there too. Um, too little uh, testosterone or DHEA, a decrease in libido, early senility, memory problems, reduced mental power, poor concentration, moodiness, depression, fatigue and weakness, passive attitude, irritability, and less interest in normal activities and hypochondria. Those are um, some of the symptoms associated with low pro progesterone and I mean, low DHEA and low testosterone. So each hormone has a sequelae of symptoms. You can see that there's an overlap in many of them, and it's hard to figure any one specifically out. And so when we talk about hormones, I always say, if we think about, and I write about this in, in chapter one, there are over 150 hormones in our body, right? There are over 150 hormones in our body. And each of them, just like students at a university, Every student, each and every one of you that are here listening, the hundreds of you that are on with me today listening, each of you has your own giftings, your own purpose, your own passions, right? Your own potential. Every hormone in our body is the same way. And so think of the students in a university and then think of the professors. And for the you know students in the university, I put estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, melatonin, um, progesterone, vitamin D, all in the student body. Now, who are the professors then of the university? Now, I put these two main professors, and that is insulin and cortisol. They are regulators. So if you're a professor, and if you've had one like I did that, you know, came in with a hangover or high or whatever, and just turned down the lights, turned on a movie and let you, you know, fell asleep in the back of the class. I mean, there's pretty much chaos and unruliness in your classroom. So, so, same is true. If insulin is resistant and rebellious, you're going to have hormonal issues, acne, hair loss, um, fatigue, drying skin, rapid aging. Cortisol is the same way. You know, if the cortisol is way too low or way too high, you're also and not following a circadian pattern. You're going to wake up tired be wired in the middle of the day or exhausted all day and have difficulty sleeping at night. And so this is why we've got to regulate insulin and cortisol. And then who then is the professor of the university? It is my favorite hormone. I get right into it in chapter one. Go ahead and put that in the chat. So what Dr. Anna's favorite hormone, and it really is your favorite hormone too, your most favorite hormone in your body the most powerful anti-aging hormone in your body. The more you have, the happier you are, the longer you'll live. Lynn Holmes, you get an A plus for being first to answer. Oxytocin, oxytocin. Colleen, oxytocin. Amy, oh my gosh, all of you guys. You guys are so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for answering oxytocin. McKenna, oxytocin on Instagram, thank you. So you guys know that oxytocin is the most powerful. That's the dean of the university. And it is the most alkalinizing hormone in our body. It is a hormone of love, bonding, and connection. It is healing, anti-aging, regenerative. It is a um, potent physician to your body for sure. So oxytocin and why that is important. I get right into it, page 15, and then there's a whole chapter in oxytocin that we'll get to later this month in the book club. But oxytocin is produced by the hypothalamus, secreted from the pituitary gland and other tissues, including the heart, the uterus, and the ovaries. Now, isn't that beautiful? The heart not only has receptors for oxytocin, but secretes, makes oxytocin. And that's powerful right? So that is so powerful. And that is why it is a powerful hormone of love, of bonding, of connection, and of longevity for so many reasons. Also very alkalinizing. So oxytocin and cortisol, right, have this battle 
Kim Floyd says, time for OxyPlay. Mwah, thank you. Yes, OxyPlay, OxyPlay, OxyPlay. You guys write that down. We need some OxyPlay every day. From Facebook, we said, reading this uh, round three of the Hormone Fix book. Awesome. Uh, we have a question came in. I'm 51, almost 52, October 12th. Uh, waiting my lab results drawn today. I've been having crazy hot flashes, mood swings, acne. What I have the hardest is with overwhelming joint pain, my hips, groin, and pelvic area like I went horseback riding. Ultrasound didn't reveal anything it, and I'm excited to fix my hormones. So it's really important that, you know, look at these, these hormone symptoms. Do the questionnaire. If you were to come visit me in my practice, I will give you a bunch of questionnaires. And um, one of them is the medical symptom questionnaire. And it's really important to do this questionnaire and to repeat it periodically to see what is going on. We go through questions from, I mean, all can have hormonal components from digestion to, you know, the head to our energy levels, to our brain, to our eyes and weight management. All of these are areas that, you know, have a hormonal component too. So we want to get that right. We want to get that right. And, um, so that's what I want you guys to understand. So what do we do when the hormones are out of balance? First is we have to, um, well, like for our, our friend here who is 51 and wrote in, she's having these um, incredible joint symptoms, joint pain. First, you need a gynecologist appointment and an ultrasound like you've done to make sure everything else is okay. Pap smear, if you haven't had one, you'll hear me say this over and over again, if you haven't had a pap smear in the last year or two, for sure, get a pap smear. You know, the number one risk factor for cervical cancer is not having a pap smear in three years. So, you know, whatever the guidelines are, I'm just telling you, we've had a really stressful last couple of years. Stress is the hormone cortisol, and that can affect your immune system. So catch, you know, we want to make sure there's nothing pathologic that we need to detect early versus later and that we want to get fixed. So, but where does the arthritic pain come? Why is that a symptom here of hormones? Do you guys know why, you know, you know I tell you in the hormone fix, but what's going on with our fascia? What's going on with our joints? What's going on? Why are we having aches and pains and stiffness in the menopausal journey? And, and which hormone is predominantly related to that? symptom. Oh yeah, you guys got to do some work. You got to answer, answer my questions here. Okay. So let's see, we have any answers yet. So which hormones related to the stiffness in our joints, in our fascia, decrease in flexibility? Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, really all of them. So all of the above to cancer, but progesterone, especially progesterone, especially. So that is, um, again, powerful, powerful hormone in our body. Um, and it, our fascia has hormone receptors. And so that loss of flexibility, the stiffness in the joint, um, are, all can relate to that. But when we're having arthritic pains, it is um, a sign of inflammation and hormone imbalance. And so getting rid of inflammation and balancing your hormones, it's key. And we do that, it takes more than hormones to fix your hormones, right? The first thing I say in the hormone fix, it takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. So um, nutrition and lifestyle is an important piece. Okay, you guys, um, for the first, the second question is like, first thing on your handout, if you don't have a handout, email team, direct message us on Instagram, or message team at drannacabeca.com. And uh, we will email it to you, but get on my email list at dranna.com. Get on my email list so that you can get the handouts too, so you can follow along. But uh, the first thing was to circle your symptoms, what symptoms you're having. And then I talk about the hormone neurotransmitter connection. So neurotransmitters are powerful chemical messengers in our body. And, um, and they are intricately related to our hormones. So I had a client, you know, who um, recently was treated for anxiety, but was never addressed. Her hormonal symptoms were never addressed. So of course she needed, she, she wasn't feeling any better. Um, and 
serotonin, so often people get put on serotonin reuptake inhibitors, selective ser SSRIs for short, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and that blocks the serotonin receptor sites. So your body thinks there's more serotonin. What's what hormone is is intricately related to serotonin? So I ask you, which hormone is intricately related to serotonin? Okay, let's see. Amy Stafford, there you go. And Lynn, you guys are my A students. Estrogen. Estrogen is the hormone specifically related to serotonin. And so, um, and I talk about this here, when estrogen levels fall, serotonin levels drop. So hence the anxiety, the worsening PMS, and you need serotonin to help boost this brain. You need estrogen to boost this brain neurotransmitter. So often it's the, it's estrogen insufficiency. So do we give estrogen right away? No, you detox your body's receptor sites. You detox the liver, you do the keto green detox in here. You supplement with keto green detox capsules, um, or, um, uh, liver support, for phase one and phase two detoxification, you do low, you reduce toxin exposure, you do dry brushing, lymphatic drainage, you know, you get into your sauna, you get on a rebounder, move the lymph, work on detoxing the body, open up those receptor sites. That's first and foremost, but knowing that low um, estrogen it can be a reason for the low serotonin. And you wanna ask, why is my serotonin low? Do I need more tryptophan? You know, do I need more estrogen? Is this, is this something that I need right now? So I often would start with a precursor like progesterone. And so speaking of progesterone, which neurotransmitter is intricately related to progesterone? It's a neurotransmitter of calm. And let's see here. What else do I say here? Foods that can help boost this neurotransmitter are cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, kefir, shrimp, green tea, lemon balm, ashwagandha, and any food high in omega-3, such as salmon. So GABA, GABA, GABA. You guys are great. Thank you. See, Anne, you got it. Colleen, thank you, Amy, Lynn. Yes, GABA. So progesterone and GABA are, are interrelated. So often the difficulty sleeping, it's because you don't have enough GABA or, or feelings of depression and anxiety as well can be from the GABA hormone and not a uh, neurotransmitter and not getting enough sleep. So this is where progesterone comes in and can often see that, um, that you need progesterone to, to support your body's production of GABA. So, and then there is the, um, hormone that's intricately related to testosterone, the neurotransmitter related to testosterone. So this is a neurotransmitter of pleasure and motivation. High levels of this neurotransmitter give you enthusiasm and drive and falling levels are linked to sense of emptiness, sadness, irritation, and boredom. So what are we, what, which hormone, which neurotransmitter is this? So we talk about estrogen and serotonin intricately linked, GABA and progesterone, dopamine and testosterone. That's right, dopamine. Right, good. Cindy, Colleen, thank you. Um, you guys are great. So Colleen said, asks, is there a downside to supplementing with GABA by itself? If you don't need it, you know, we don't need it. But GABA... Um, is a good supplement to help with relaxation, to help with anxiety, to help with sleep as well. I typically start um, with progesterone, uh, bioidentical progesterone, like balance cream with progesterone and pregnenolone. So those are um, those are really good questions. Um, Lily asked, do gynos test for all the hormone levels you mentioned? So in chapter two, we're gonna get into testing. So we'll talk about what testing you can do on your own and what you can request your physician to do. And that really, again, depends. 
So some do test and some don't test. But what you what you what you measure gets managed, right? Tests don't gas. There's an important part to that. We know that at a certain point, okay, our hormones, where you've stopped having periods, we know our hormones are low. We can, you know, we can supplement. But um, it's important to understand what's happening to those hormones too. So from you know, questionnaires that we use from blood test, urine test, even salivary testing, you know, what's happening with our cortisol pattern. We can look at saliva and um, blood's not great to look at that, but a salivary uh, cortisol pattern or a urinary cortisol pattern will tell you what's happening to your cortisol pattern throughout the day. And it's, it's important to look at that, especially if you've been having a lot of stress and, um, and you don't feel good. We want to see what's going on. It could be too high, too low. It could be out of sync. But regardless, we want to regulate our circadian rhythm. That's key to healing. And again, yes, there is a chapter in the hormone fix on that. So um, Kim asked, what do I do if the lab says normal, but the symptoms and body doesn't agree? I always say treat the patient, not the labs, right? Ultimately, treat the patient, not the labs. And normal isn't necessarily optimal. So, yeah, so what's the, you know, the American Pediatric Association changed its um, uh, hallmarks for development, like back six months. So like delayed development is normal, uh, but now it's not delayed development anymore. It's just normal development. So we want to be optimal, not normal. Mm -hmm. We want to be optimal, not normal. Okay. Uh, Michelle said, can you talk about supplements, what to take, when to take with food or without food? Typically vitamins are taken with food. Amino acids are taken, uh, on an empty stomach. And so, um, we can talk more about that in the supplement chapter. All right. How often do you recommend someone have a pelvic exam after a total hysterectomy? I mean, do you still have your ovaries? Um, you know, really depends, but at least every two to three years to do a pelvic exam with your gynecologist. So to have a bimanual exam, if you've had a stool blood test, that's usually they'll do a bimanual exam and test your stool for blood at the same time of exam. So it's a good screening for early detection, um, not 100% sensitive, but it's a good, it's a good screening. And we don't want a vaginal or vulvar cancer to go undiagnosed because it's treatable early. And so a good question. Let's see, okay. Let's see where we're at here. Amy asks, how do you know if you have problems with detox? What about MTHFR and other blocks to detoxification? So in the comprehensive lab work, and we'll get we'll get to labs in just a second. I just want to make sure: are there any other questions about um, the neurotransmitters and our hormones? So, estrogen and serotonin are related. Dopamine and testosterone, GABA and progesterone. Okay, now we're into chapter two: tests don't guess. So, um, did you guys do your questionnaires? Did you fill in your questionnaires? Did you tally up some scores, record your total points? So you can download the worksheet and put your scores in there. And this way you can come back, do, you know, do the keto green detox and the hormone fix, and then retest your stores. We see an 80 to 90% improvement in just two weeks on your symptom scores. So that's powerful, but when you do this, then we can, and this is typically what I do with clients. I have, when you come in, I will do an evaluation. You'll fill out the questionnaires. I will usually start you on a detox till we get the labs back and you'll come in. You'll say, Dr. Anna, I feel hundred percent better. I feel 80% better. I'm doing you know, so, you know, so much better, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll hear this all the time. And all you've done is cleanse your body, detox, supported detoxification. We do that with supplementing too with Mighty Maca Plus. And if your hormone toxicity score was greater than 10 or your 
MSQ score was greater than 15, we add in keto green detox capsules or MedCaps DPO or AdvaClear by Metagenics, MedCaps DPO by Zymogen. Um, these are phase one, phase two liver support on my website. It's keto green detox. So would add those capsules in if you've scored higher than 10 on the HSQ or 15 on the MSQ uh, to support additional detoxification. In other words, your body needs it. Your body needs some help. And often if you have these symptoms, there's often a problem with detoxification. Either the toxicity load is too much. Say for example, you're working in a building that is off gassing uh, chemicals and fumes and that those are hormone disruptors and your body's dealing with that or you have mold toxicity and your body's dealing with that. That's often going to create an overabundant toxic burden. So cleaning up your environment, cleaning up and supporting your body's natural detoxification, it's powerful. So my website is dranna.com, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. Okay. So, um, yeah. Michelle said, I just came back from my doctor. She said that if pelvic exam and HPV comes back normal, I'm good for five years and don't need another pelvic exam before then. Does that sound correct? She said, 55 year old with ovary. I understand those are the new guidelines. Even Medicare will pay for another pap smear in two years. At least they haven't changed that. The number one risk factor, a study out of Izmir showed that the number one risk factor for cervical cancer was no pap smear in three years or more. And um, we've just gone through a very immunosuppressive time period. Maybe you had COVID, maybe you didn't, maybe you were vaccinated, maybe you weren't. But um, I wouldn't wait longer than, personally, I'm not waiting longer than three years. So regardless, any new sexual partners, any exposures, any high stress conditions puts you at another risk. So they're saying this guideline, but what if you have a new sexual partner, you know? What if there's that exposure to, does that change the guidelines? Well, I don't know because they didn't ask that question. So you have to do you, you have to do what's best for you. And if, you know, yeah, I'm aware of these guidelines and I just have a patient with stage four cervical cancer and um, she was told she didn't need another pap smear. Also stage four. So, all right. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So Kim said, are fascial exercises beneficial for release and detox? Absolutely. Yeah. Lynn said, yes, I did all the questionnaire. Yikes, all fairly high. Well, this is Lynn, great for doing the questionnaires. This is just your starting point. So don't be, this is again, what gets measured gets managed. So you know where you are now, you let's see where you are in three weeks. I guarantee you, you're going to have an incredible improvement. So keep following along. Colleen said, I'll take the test tonight. I recently signed up for the book club, so I haven't tested it. It's okay. And you can get the book on Audible and they have the questionnaires as downloads, or you can um, get the um, Kindle book and you can do that too. All right. Love La said, I'd love your earrings. Thank you. They're from my cousin, um, Asaf Huri, his shop in Lebanon. So I love them too. So I love earrings. I have an aunt who said, you know, I'd rather leave the house naked than without earrings. <laughs> uh, that kind of stuck with me, needless to say. Michelle said, my numbers are high too. So you guys, if you have this, um, Go ahead, Colleen said, I have two copies of the book, one that's signed by you. So go ahead and do your, you know, go ahead and do your quizzes right now while you're doing this, um, while we're while we're here, go ahead and do this. And now um, the MSQ is looking at all, all the symptoms. The EVE questionnaire is what I call the how healthy is your JJ questionnaire now. The EVE questionnaire, do you lack energy? Do you find yourself making up excuses to avoid having sex? Do you find yourself sexually undesirable? Is a thought of sex distressing for you? Do you have discomfort during or after sex? Is vaginal or bulbar dryness troublesome? Would you consider yourself frustrated about your sex life? Do you find it difficult to become aroused? Do you lose urine when you cough or sneeze? Do you use pads or panty liners due to urine linkage? These are all questions that relate to vulvar vaginal health. 
and why it's in the hormone fix, because it's a very important part of life and living. And we have to look and assess, ask these questions. Um, we have to do that. So, and then you can score, but wherever you are right now, that's what's important. Oh my gosh. Mike, Dr. Mike Luttrell, you guys have to follow Dr. Mike Luttrell almost joined his practice straight out of Emory, a lovely, lovely, lovely man and physician. So the question, what's the number one reason for weight gain after menopause? Oh, it's the men in our life, Mike. It's the men in our life. That's for sure. <laughs> no, the number one reason is really becoming more insulin resistant. There's 13 weight control hormones, and we know this, and we're going to talk about many hormones in our book, in the Hormone Fix major hormones, insulin and cortisol, and the most powerful hormone, oxytocin. So these are the important hormones. Thank you for that leading question, uh, Mike. And um, in chapter two, there's also my positivity self-assessment questionnaire. So I know I've just asked you all these symptoms. And in medicine, we do, we focus on the negative. But what I created for my patients in my practice, I created this positivity self-assessment questionnaire. The reason I created it, it was um, several reasons. That number one, we focus on the negative. We're really never focusing on the positive. And it's, you know, it's not very therapeutic, right? So just kind of you're constipated, you're fatigued, you're tired, you're achy. So what does the PSQ do instead of the MSQ? What's the PSQ? Positivity self-assessment. I ask you these seven questions. I am happy and joyful. You can answer it right now. Just jot down from zero to three, from zero to three, write down. And if um, zero for not at all and three for extremely. So I am happy and joyful. Three, extremely happy and joyful. I am content. So answer that one. How content do you feel? I am energetic. I am productive. I am social and friendly. I am alert. My mind is focused. I feel good about my body. So one patient had come into me and she was a high school student and was struggling with anxiety and depression. I had her do this questionnaire for a, you know, for a month and I wanted to see how her moods, et cetera, changed with her menstrual cycle. She was having PMS symptoms. And when she brought it back, she had zeros all the way down the page. So what does that mean? There's a lot more to deal with here than, you know, PMS or in a regular menstrual cycle, right? But the goal was, and towards the end, she started having some ones and twos, so a little bit. So it can be diagnostic and therapeutic. The biggest thing is how do we feel about ourselves? How do we, you know, how do we feel about ourselves? And, you know, how are we checking in? Oftentimes, you know, we can check in and, and really not even know how we feel. So I'd ask you that right now from these questions, you know, how, how do you feel about yourself right now? Are you happy and joyful, content, energetic, productive, social and friendly? Are you alert and is your mind focused? And uh, do you feel good about your body? So how would you answer that? You know? Yeah. So it's a good question. So I want you guys to do these, to answer these every day and to assess how are you feeling and, and tap into that because, you know, self-love is our highest frequency for sure. Self-love is our highest frequency and love as an energy is, you know, creates coherence and creates healing. And so we want to focus on that too. All right. Let's see. We got some questions here. Lynn said, oh, your earrings are cute. My cousin made these earrings. I saw it for you. Okay. Um, from Facebook, I have two questions. If you are still married to the same husband for 20 years and both have been exclusive to each other, is it okay to have a pap smear every three years? Yes. Provided that you always check negative and do not have any history or risk factors. Yes. My gynecologist performs it every three years if you're normal. I'm 52 and in perimenopause. Yeah. So I think you're exclusive, never had high risk, um, uh, high risk HPV if that was tested. But I think, you know, probably three years is as long as we should go without one until, you know, we start to see a decline in the cancers that we're seeing popping up everywhere. Okay. And is the pap smear the same as a pelvic exam? No, you can have a pelvic exam without having a pap smear. So <laughs> from Facebook, yes to all those sex questions. <laughs> all right. 
Um, Kim said, I know a conversation is coming as we continue reading the book. I'm curious if intermittent fasting is stressful. I was told it's not a good idea post-menopause. It's essential. Intermittent fasting is essential. Okay. As is feasting, as is extended fasting. So good question. Um, from Facebook, my husband's so frustrated with my low libido, supportive, but you can tell he's bothered. Um, and she said, I'm embarrassed with my own body. Well, I would say, how did you feel? You know, like if you look back on yourself 10 years from now at this moment, would you look back on yourself with compassion, with love and embrace you the way you are right now? I would, I would, I bet you would too. So I would say to, uh, first, and, and I say this in my course on sexual CPR, there's A, B, C's, accept where you are right now, accept where you are right now, B, be present and C, communicate. So uh, communication is key, getting to the underlying reasons why maybe one of my team members will put a link to sexual CPR in here too. And there's you know, this is good. You're in the right place because the hormone fix is a good starting point to understand well, what's going on with your hormones. Where, you know, like, you know, why am I rolling over and not interested when I couldn't wait and I was initiating? That's a point you can come to again, understanding what's happening to your body and making conscious intention. So addressing, is it reasons of disconnect? Is it reasons of desire? Is it discomfort? If it hurts every time you do something, why would you want to? So checking in with your body, um, it's powerful. And we have a lot of discussion on this in the hormone fix. So keep going through, you do all these quizzes. Cindy said, you know, she put her score in here. Okay, this is why I'm here, right? <laughs> and this is why I'm here for you. Um, and Mike, I would love to know your answer to this question, Dr. Luttrell. Should women get pelvic exams annually without a pap? I believe they should. I believe they should. Yes. What is your opinion? I think that when we go too long, we um, maybe miss something. We, you know, again, I'm really in the space where very, uh, you know, where I've seen it, I've seen it before. You have all the money in the world, getting best hormone uh, at the best hormone centers and taking your vitamins and you don't go, you, you don't get a pap smear because you're too old. Did they ask, did you ever have an abnormal? Did they ask, did you have a new sexual partner? Did they ask any of those questions? No. And what happens? Then you have a delayed diagnosis of something. And we don't want that to happen. I'd rather... I, for me personally, I'd rather see you every year. So what about you, Dr. Luttrell? So Amy put in the link for sexual CPR. So you guys have that. And Mike agrees. And yeah, what is MMG? I don't know. He would agree. MMG, ovarian cancer pro prolapses. <laughs> We want to rule out ovarian cancer and we look at, you know, bladder health, vulvar health um, issues, again, clitoris to anus. I mean, the important vulvar vaginal tissue. How is that? Are we healthy? And um, I think it's important to evaluate that. And, and for each of you yourself to evaluate that, getting a mirror, looking at your pelvic floor, what is normal for you? Understanding how it feels. Um, and that's important. So, so Amy asked, what are you looking for in a pelvic exam in postmenopausal women? I mean, you want to look at the health of the vaginal tissue. You want to look for, again, of course, bladder health, incontinence issues. If there's atrophy, atrophy, you want to treat that. And you do that, you know, if you're using Jolva, increase your use of it daily, can add in vaginal DHEA as well. So there are options that we can do, um, prolapse issues. Um, hemorrhoids. I hope that I mean using again. I hope you, if you're using Jolva, using it on the anal tissue as well to keep that tissue healthier. That's the big. That's the big deal. So, Lee 
Lynn said, I read chapters one to three before going out for errands today. I'm focused on smiling and being more positive, even though I wasn't sure I actually felt that way for real. <laughs> Bake it till you make it, right? Bake it till you make it. All right. And um, she said, I swear people picked up on it and I had a much more positive experience than usual lately and it ended up feeling really positive. So number one, I want to thank you for doing the PSQ. That was the intention of it, right? Because it's important to check in with ourselves. And like you said, fake it till you make it. Like a smile in and of itself will activate more muscles in your face than a frown and it activates um, serotonin. Alma said, my doctor started me on estrogen and testosterone. I'm afraid to start it. Is it safe? I was prescribed it because I told her I had low libido. So I always would add in progesterone to the mix. Progesterone is a mother hormone. And um, progesterone and pregnenolone, it's in my balance cream. You can read about it on that site. Talk to your doctor about it and see. Um, but topical, I imagine topical versus oral. Again, topical is very, very safe. And, um, and if you, you know, your physician is knowledgeable, that's makes all the difference. So, okay. Mammogram. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Luttrell, how about thermography, <laughs> ultrasound, breast, breast imaging, MRI, other things, but also for sexual health to have that conversation. <laughs> said I'm driving and texting. Oh yeah. Very nice. Well, you're in a self-driving Tesla. I hope there you go. So, um, and, and to check in if, and Mike is this, this kind of doctor that, um, that Hippocrates was talking about a good doctor will cure disease, right? A great doctor will prevent it. Mike's a great doctor. I want to be a great doctor. The goal is to prevent disease, not diagnose it, you know, not di not diagnose it, not have to treat it, right? To prevent it. That's the goal of a great physician. And that's why we love what we do. And that's why I've written three books and I'm here for you because I don't want you to suffer. I don't, I want you to feel empowered over your own health. Uh, of your own body. You are the CEO that no one tell you anything different. You are the CEO, chief executive officer, the CMO, chief medical officer of your body. And no one should take that away from you. So trust your intuition, check in with yourself. How are you feeling? Don't deny symptoms if you're experiencing them. One question that I typically ask my patients after I've you know, before I, before I leave them, before we part ways, is there anything that you want to talk about today that we haven't? Is there anything on your heart you want to talk about? And often there is, there's that thing I'm afraid to talk about. I'm afraid to bring up and I'm struggling. And so the other thing you can do, you can look at these, go through these questions. Are there symptoms on here you haven't thought about that could be related? to hormone imbalance and inflammation. 90% of all diseases, hormone imbalance and inflammation, get to the root causes of them. We're not putting Band-Aids here in the hormone fix. It takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. I need you to be your CEO, your CMO, you in charge of your body, making the next right steps. And to the best of my ability, I put those guidelines right here. Everything you can do in here is in your power. And now pray. You can choose what you're eating. You can choose what, what you're thinking and just awareness about it. So, and following the guidelines of my keto green way. Um, speaking of which, there is one thing I really want you to buy. And that is the urine test strips. So getting into that test don't guess. One of the things I ask you to test in chapter two is your urine pH and ketones. So urine pH, ketones, and uric acid, my uh, dear friend, Dr. David Perlmutter, brought to my mind that third one, uric acid, how important it was. And it was so important to me because I'm a high uric acid former. I would never have known that without having that conversation. You know, when the student's ready, the teacher will come. Without having had that conversation with Dr. Perlmutter and realizing when I fast too much, when, when I was fasting too much, when I was trying my carnivore plans that I wrote in menu pause and I was doing that too long, when I was doing yoga, I was getting left big toe pain. I'm like that's like a gouty symptom, right? I didn't put it together to even check my uric acid till 
Dr. David Perlmutter's book, Drop Acid. That is why I added that third pad onto the urine test strips. Uric acid is a key marker of metabolic flexibility. And when the uric acid is high, you are conserving, you're conserving fat. You are um, going to be more inflamed and more at risk for diabetes, heart disease, and gouty symptoms. You know, that's the least of your worries with a high uric acid. But um, so that's important to understand and see. Typically, when you're done fasting, uric acid levels should come down. However, those with a genetic predisposition towards diabetes, heart disease, maybe a high uric acid formers, also PCOS, high uric acid former. So if you're not testing, you're guessing. So I added those uric acid pads onto the urine test strip. So check your urine pH. Now, as we go through this week, I want you to work on the alkalinity component. You'll read that chapter three and four. And, um, and uh, then we'll bump into ketosis further on down the path, but start checking. Test, don't guess. Um, yeah. Uh, Jill said, primary doc won't do a breast ultrasound, says it's not a screening tool. So if you feel a lump or a bump, um, a breast ultrasound is part of a workup. So any irregularities, anything like that would be part of a workup. It's not a screening exam. So you would have to pay for that separately. Insurance isn't paying for it unless it's um, ordered as a result of a palpable some, uh, suspicion. Air, suspicious area. Thermography you can do. Typically you can do thermography for under $200. And um, yeah. So uh, Amy says, Dr. Mike is not far from me. See, Amy, I could have been your neighbor. All right. Sue said, grateful for your book and the knowledge you shared. Kim said, I just started the balance cream. I love it. It makes me feel cared for. Thank you. Um, Bridget said, can I use the balance cream if I have a Mirena IUD? Absolutely. And um, if you're still spotting with a Mirena IUD, otherwise I would just choose 25 days of the month. Um, Sian said, my urine pH was 8.5. That's great. Um, urine pH of 8.5. That's great. So um happy with that. She said, my doctor ordered a ultrasound of kidney and bladder. What else do you recommend? Well, I mean, it could have been related to what you ate. So is it consistently, are you checking it yourself? Is it consistently 8.5? So that can be from, you know, a high alkalinity, high alkaline foods. However, if it is, if there, if it's persistently high like that and doesn't drop into the seven or six range, then I would question it. So I think full chemistry labs and an ultrasound of the kidney and bladder are fine, but also would check to see if it's a medicine you're taking, a supplement you're taking, or um, or something else. All right, let's see. I've got great questions here, you guys. Thank you for all these questions. So from Facebook, I keep telling my primary care provider and, and obstetrician that I feel terrible trying to be in charge, my own boss, but also feeling a little crazy 50% of the time. If you're only 50, only feeling crazy 50% of the time, I think you're doing pretty darn good. <laughs> so, so anyway, hopefully you'll find some answers in here and keep working with us. Um, but if, you know, you can get second and third opinions, you know, you're not stuck with one provider. Toby said the uric acid part of the strip is really hard to read. The grays all look the same. Any suggestions about how to read this? They, it will get dark. It'll get dark blue if you're starting to pour too much uric acid. So you will notice that change. If you do an extended fasting, you will make more uric acid. So you'll see that shift. So that, that gray pattern, unless it starts hitting that 400, it's okay. Over that 400, it's okay. All right, let's see. Michelle said, I found that I start to get sore knees the day after eating a hamburger patty. Um, that's a good question. Um, it you know, could be that you're, the purines throw your body over the edge and you're forming your acid. It could be a food sensitivity. Um, was there a bun around that 
hamburger patty <laughs> at our house. We don't use, we don't use bread. So yeah, otherwise it could be glued in. And also depending on, you know, was there anything, any filler put in that hamburger patty too? Is it grass fed, uh, free range? I have to tell you that I just started getting, um, from a farmer here in Texas, grass, you know, uh, a regenerative farmer and just a purist, right? And just a purist as far as raising their cattle. And I started giving my kids, you know, this, I made this great um, blended, if you saw my Instagram or my stories, this great blended um, pasta sauce with their ground prime, which in primal, their ground primal, which includes liver, heart, uh, organ meat, as well as um, the um, beef. And it's just made a difference. You know, it's just like, I can tell like that my daughter's face looks clearer. And I don't know, it just seems like and switching to their steaks and everything else. I mean, just um, makes me curious, really, what's in our food chain. So, you know, I'm really blessed to be able to get it's called holy cow beef, holy cow beef. And they're here in Texas. I don't know if they ship across the nation, but I really like their farming practices. And they're as clean and organic as you can be. And um, so I think it's interesting. Anyway, so not all beef is created equal. It was my primary <laughs> message on that. All right. Let's see. That's right. So did you, okay, you did your questions. Um, how did you guys do on the MSQ? If you want to put your notes in the chat, but otherwise, guys, can we put a link from my team to the handouts? So we can post the link to the handouts here. So people can go ahead and make sure you download that. Um, so, okay, so Michelle said, the, regarding the uric acid, Sorny is after eating a hamburger patty, namely the Kirkland brand. So what are we to do about that? Just eat other forms of protein? Um, maybe try try organic. I mean, try an organic piece of, of beef. Check your uric acid on your urine strips. Do you make more uric acid after eating that? So the urine, the keto pH urine strips have the uric acid pad. If it gets above 400, 700, then um, want to check a blood uric acid level too. We want that number to be 4.3 or less. So, um, all right. And Michelle said, no bun, just to be clear. Okay, good. <laughs> Amy said, usually when it's in range, it's fairly light gray and easy to read. She goes, I find that if I can't exactly tell what it is, it's probably too high. That's my experience with the strips anyway. So I haven't had the new strips for that long. But yeah, again, if to clear, try eating, you know, some of the vegan meals. That's a great suggestion, Amy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That will give you a baseline. Um, that'll give you a baseline. So Kim said, butcher box ships free range grass fed beef, chicken and clean fish. Good to know. One thing um, I think it's really important to know too with our meat. And I learned this from regenerative farming panel that I happened to uh, stumble upon at the last KetoCon. But it was really fascinating because the rules have, have, have really lifted to what we can call free range and grass fed. Apparently the grass fed label, unless it's a grass finish, because often times, like even at uh, the restaurant I was at last night, Park House, it's grass fed beef, but it's grain finished grain finished so it gets fatty and more tender and um but they're not going to tell you that it's grass-fed so you have to really ask um yeah harder and harder to to know what's in what we're eating we are what we eat we eat we ate ate <laughs> what we eat ate and what they were injected with treated with etc right so I have kept you guys over. Thank you for being here and um, going through the hormone fix chapters one and two with me. 
we will hit on chapters three and four next time. Oh yeah, before I go, okay, lab testing. My four key tests, you guys write these down. I want you to know these numbers, like you know your shoe size, your pant size, your dress size, the four key tests that I want you to know. And it's on page 35, 34 and 35, laboratory testing, chapter two in the hormone fix. The four key tests that you need to know in order to manage your hormone. Do you know what those are? Go ahead and enter it in the comment box. Um, Cindy, Kim, you guys are welcome. Before you go, what are the four key tests that you need to know? And um, and these are this is really important. Again, check your urine pH and ketones. And if you can get this blood test done now, this is really important because we're going to do a Keto Green 16 challenge in October. Uh, so I want you guys to be ready for that. So if you can get these blood tests and then repeat them after the challenge, you will see improvements. Michelle said vitamin D. Yes, that is one of them. Um, DHEA sulfate. She said, um, question about the requested test. If you've had your progesterone and estrogen tested, why do you need DHEA sulfate? DHEA makes is the precursor to, um, is the precursor to testosterone and estrogen. So, and further upstream is progesterone and pregnenolone and cholesterol. So we want to look at that pathway and see what's going on. DHEA, high levels of DHEA sulfate are associated with low levels of cancer, associated with a stronger immune system, associated with good, strong bones, less osteoporosis. DHEA sulfate is probably the most underutilized test that we have available to us as physicians that your insurance will pay for. So you can use the diagnosis code, you know, for wellness check, for menopause symptoms, for, you know, fatigue and insurance company will pay for that test. As well as these other, the other three of my key four tests. Um, so let's see. Oh yeah, so Kim answered first. Vitamin D, A1C, DHEA, and you're missing one, Kim. Cindy, yep, you got them all, Cindy. 25-hydroxy vitamin D, A1C, HSC reactive protein, so HSCRP, and DHEAS, DHEAS in the blood. Not DHEA in the blood, but DHEAS in the blood. So these are all really important tests. So, yep, they just typed it in. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, Kendra said, if you've had a Dutch test, Dutch is really great. I just was interviewed on their podcast and I just read my Dutch test results recently and realized I've gone three years. Again, the pandemic threw everything off. Like it'd been three years since I'd done my own Dutch test. So that's looking at urinary hormones and it's, it's a really powerful test. The Dutch test will show DHEA levels, DHEA in the urine, you know, a, a metabolite, give you an idea. We'll look at DHEA, cortisol and metabolites, estrogen and metabolites, and um, gives us a really good picture. Looks at cortisol over time throughout the day to look at your circadian rhythm, your co cortisol curve, get an idea about that. So it's a good test to do. It's a test I often order. And I have information on that in here as well. So other tests, comprehensive metabolic and hormone panel. And you can put a link up to these tests. Uh, Amy, here to ultalabtest.com forward slash Dr. Anna Kabeca will be able to see um, some of these testing levels that I recommend as far as blood work at that site. I also put in a comprehensive stool analysis. Like I like to tell my patients, at one point or another, we're gonna check every body fluid you have. <laughs> so stool analysis, blood, urine, uh, vaginal fluid, saliva at some point, you know, we'll check them all. Um, also looking for gluten associated cross reactivity foods and food sensitivities. Um, as well as epithelial permeability test. I use Cyrex, the Array 4 for this test. And um, there's also the Cyrex map test. Now that's available to look at um, markers of immunity, as, which is important to evaluate. Um, stool testing, I use the GI map or GI effects. And then food sensitivity testing. There are different ways you can do food sensitivity testing. Adrenal stress index, and I recommend it in here, 23andMe 
test. And then there are companies that you can put plug that data into to get a readout as well. And then um, urinary testing for hormones and nutrition from Precision Analytics, which is the Dutch test, or from Genova. And it can tell you some important thing as well as Krebs cycle metabolite. So, you know, nutritional, um, a nutritional analysis. Important to know that when I'm working on your hormones, we've got to fix the gut. So if you're constipated, not having a bowel movement every 10 days or whatever, not having a bowel movement every day, then you really, you know, we have to address that constipation. We start working with you nutritionally, upping also in the meantime, probiotics, vitamin C, um, magnesium to bowel tolerance to get the bowels movement as we work to repair it, low inflammatory foods, figure out what the food sensitivity is, so much to go into that. We get more into that, into the hormone fix. And this is the review of chapters one and two. If you haven't downloaded the handout to make your notes, do it so you can come back, retest and put your answers again and see what progress you made. What gets measured gets managed. So test, don't guess. It's really important to, um, to evaluate that. But the um, to, Kendra, to answer your question, the Dutch test does not look at hemoglobin A1C, HSCRP, or a vitamin D level. So you will miss that. So those are the four tests, DHEA sulfate, HSCRP, hemoglobin A1C, and vitamin D. I can watch those four markers get better and better. You're going to be healthier and healthier. We can do the, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of additional testing too. Believe me, it's nice to look at and manage as well um, and important. But those are the four key that I want to watch over time to see get better and improve. And yeah, um, what else? that I have in here. Any other? Oh, and then I, if I was to add a fifth test on here, it would be a blood uric acid. I would add a blood uric acid test. So yeah. All right. You guys, thank you so much for being here. So this has been great. I feel fantastic. I was always wondering why my big toe would get to hurting. Could be that, you know, I mean, it could be that. Um, good questions. And then you can see my full panel at ultalabtest.com forward slash Dr. Anna Kabeca. I give references in my book to help you. And you guys are welcome. Thank you, Amy, for being on here. Amy is such a big support in our Facebook Keto Green community and our Girlfriend Doctor Club. And I thank you guys. So next, uh, next week, chapters three and four. So next week, chapter three is what is the hormone fix? We're going to talk about the nutrition plan, the role of ketosis, the role of alkalinity, and the combination between, and we'll talk about this next time, ketones, ketosis, and insulin, and alkalinity and cortisol. And we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So you guys make sure if you haven't done your question, if you haven't done your quiz, your quizzes in chapter two, please do those um, questionnaires because what gets measured gets managed. And we'll talk about that. And then chapter four, we'll go right into getting started, the keto green diet and getting started. And that'll get you into part two and the dietary um, tools and information on that. So then get ready to start your 10 day keto green hormone detox. All right. So that's in here and that's here for you. And I thank you guys for being here. Share this book with your friends. Please review it. We are, your five-star reviews mean so much. Review it on Amazon and Goodreads. That would help me out a lot. So if you enjoyed your time with me today, please go leave me a five-star review at Amazon and Goodreads. And on my website, that wouldn't hurt. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> I thank you guys for being here. And you got it. So if you haven't read chapters one through four, have them by next Wednesday read and we'll We'll go through it. Thank y'all for being here. You guys, thanks for thanks for playing. This has been OxyPlay for me. You are fantastic. Geraldine, thank you. You are amazing. Thank you, Kendra. Right back at you. All right, you guys. Thank you. Uh, Hi. Hey, Amira, Ava.
Can you come here? Amir, Ava, I'm still live. <laughs> Please help me show the world you love me. Come here, girl. <laughs> oh, my daughter just got home from school. All right. <laughs> 